the help of the insect invasion, you can now install the main caps, which are these, and these are all marked one, two, three, and four, and they have an arrow facing front. So this is how they go in after they get the bearings installed. Here's two different types of bearings. This is a regular bearing. It'll go here or, or here or here. This has got a little cutout or an offset. That is for the thrust bearing. You can tell it's different from everything else. And that guy has the same little keyway here and it just slides right in like so. Same with this one. Keyway, keyway. Just goes right in. Just like that. And this will fit on there just like this. These have two bolts that go in the top as well as two bolts that come in from the side. That's for strength. That's pretty cool. I like that. So I'll go ahead and load all the bearings in here. Load all the bearings into the caps and then we'll be ready for some assembly lube and then we can set the crank down in it and then put these caps on and then torque them in the proper torque sequence. Now this cap has an offset right in the middle. So obviously that is only getting one bearing. It fits in that one. The other ones are offset to the side. So those will go in the other caps. This is the assembly lube. You want to use it liberally. Don't be afraid to use the lubrication on the bearings. You're not going to over lubricate them for sure. Just make sure you get it on there thoroughly. Get all the surfaces covered. You can just use your finger. It's no big deal. There's no special applicator for uh, lubing up the bearings. Pre-lubrication, I guess you'd call this. Keep in mind, this is going to be immersed in engine oil or at least uh, doused pretty thoroughly when uh, you fill the engine up with uh, your five quarts of oil. So I have all the bearings lubed up and it's, go it's time to put the crank in now. Just set it in there gently. Make sure that your surfaces that sit on your bearings are nice and clean before you do this otherwise you'll trap dirt in the the lube which is pretty darn sticky and you don't want to uh, trap any dirt or anything in there that could potentially clog up an oil passage or just get caught in a bearing you end up having a spun bearing and it'll just ruin your day and uh, waste all your time and effort doing this so just make sure you got it all clean now we can put the other half of the bearings into the main caps and then we'll put those in too. These have keyways as well just like the uh, bottom ones or just like the the block has keyways for those bearings. Installing the main caps is pretty much the same for all of them. Make sure that you pay attention to your arrows and the numbers. Sometimes these are not numbered and uh, you'll want to mark them before you uh, disassemble the engine to make sure that they go back in the same place that they came out. These are easily installed. Uh, make sure you follow your Haynes manual if you have one or your shop manual if you're going by a shop manual. I'm pretty sure it cautions against knocking the caps down with a hammer. 
mean, they're a pretty tight fit, but uh, you want to knock them down gently with a rubber hammer or a, a block of wood with a regular hammer, either way. Just don't, the rule of thumb is don't force anything. These are made to go together in a certain a specific way, so uh, shouldn't be anything that's got to be forced. This is a good way of doing it, just a little bit side to side, side to side. You can see it slowly going down till it gets into position. Then you can uh, install your bolts once you get these in. And then make sure you tighten your bolts in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. One thing I should have done here that I didn't on this cap right here is I should have put some lube on the sides of that thrust bearing. I'm narrating this after this is done because my uh, microphone crapped out and I didn't realize it. So I'm adding audio in afterwards. All in all, this build has been pretty easy. I actually like these uh, little 3.8 liter V6s and uh, they're just not complicated at all to where I thought the uh, installing the balance shaft was going to be kind of a pain in the butt. Turns out that's extremely easy. Same with the timing chain. Very straightforward. Um, I'm assuming that the uh, LS1 or the LS series is mostly similar to this, but uh, I know they've got some other quirky things that uh, this engine doesn't have. Crossover tubes and things in the lifter valley, uh, I want to say knock sensors that are down there. There's quite a few things that just seems to me makes it over complicated. This engine, everything straightforward. Very much like a, uh, a uh, newer updated version of a 289 or 302 Ford engine or even a, a small block Chevy for that matter pretty much straightforward nothing too complicated okay if you've never seen these before these are freeze plugs they're pretty much in every engine as far as I know except for maybe an aluminum block but cast iron blocks have them and their main purpose is to be a fail safe device in case your the coolant inside your block freezes then it'll presumably push this out when the water expands instead of cracking your block. I don't know that that always works, but uh, I'm putting some Loctite gasket maker just as an extra sealant around these to um, ensure against water leaks. You don't want to have these leaking after uh, you put water in there and get it warmed up for the first time. They are extremely difficult to change in the car. So that's one reason why uh, the machine shop takes these out. It's a good thing. So that when uh, you get, the, get a new engine in, you put some new freeze plugs in, that's one more thing you don't have to worry about. Because you do not want to have to change these in the car. You just basically tap them in evenly. I'm using a socket and a hammer here. And that can easily happen. It is a tight fit. It's a pressed fit, so you want to make sure you get them in straight. This took me a little bit to do all four. But I wanted to make darn sure I got them in right and that we didn't have any sealing issues after the engine is installed or after I've installed the car over the engine I'm very seriously considering taking the front subframe out which is the way you're supposed to do this honestly 
you're supposed to lift the car off of the engine and the subframe and the transmission. I have to do everything the difficult way. So I pulled the engine out and uh, which is okay. With a V8 you'd have a really hard time doing it. But this six cylinder engine is pretty small and this a pretty good size engine bay. So uh, getting this out through the top was not that big of an issue. Getting it back in could be more of an issue. So I'm, I'm thinking that I'm going to go ahead and lift the car off. Take the subframe out. The only thing I don't like about doing that is messing with the, the brake lines. Because if you get air in your ABS system, it's you're not going to be able to get it out most of the time. You have to take it somewhere to get it bled. And that's kind of a pain. But I do like uh, having that having all that out then you can clean and paint the uh, subframe which you will never have the chance to do that again unless you pull pull it out so get that cleaned and painted and you can also address the wheel wells and your suspension eat very easy because it's all right there then uh, which I might go ahead and do that so here's, uh, you've basically seen a uh, freeze plug installed. So that's just basically that same procedure times four. Okay, I've just put a couple bolts in here just to hold the crank in because that uh, could be an issue. I'm waiting on uh, main cap bolts. Once I get those in, I'll crank this down torque it down the way it's supposed to be. In the meantime, I'll go ahead and put the connecting rods in.